Hey everybody and welcome to the Quadcopter Review. I'm your host Pepe Prons and as always make sure you look in the upper right hand corner and look for the current giveaways going on at the channel and often you'll see other little interesting news about the channel pop up up there. Now in today's review we're going to be taking a look at the Tiny GT8. So this is the 88.6 I believe millimeter release by LDARC. You can pick one of these up at Banggood. Look for the links below. And it's a little bit bigger than the Tiny GT7 we've already reviewed, but has a little bit different in components. So let's go ahead and take a look at what we get in the box. Now, the first thing we're going to get in the box, obviously, is the Tiny GT8 itself. And as you can see, it's set to, again, about like a 15 degree angle on the camera which I still think is too low for these things. We're also going to get the 380 Maw 2S battery and you get one of those in the package as well. Also inside this little package there is a goodie bag full of many many things and the first thing we're going to find in that bag is the USB two cable that we're going to use and this is a special little USB two cable not that special but it's got a much smaller um, wire and and coating around the plug itself so you can get in these small spaces that they have here on the front of the gt8 and the gt7 it's a little more of a problem in the gt7 than the gt8 i was able to get my standard wires in this one without as much problem now you're also going to get Another two full sets of props in there, so that's a total of three sets of props if you include the ones on it. You're going to get some spare prop and motor uh, bolts as well. You're also going to get a sticker pack that is more like what you'll see in the advertisement on Banggood. You're also going to get this uh, XH 2.54 to JST transfer cable. You're also going to get a little pamphlet that's going to show you how to bind it in all the different receiver types you can get. And then you're also going to get the really nice GT7 and GT8 manual that comes along with it. And it's in Chinese and in English. And there is about everything you could want to know inside here. There's how to set up your OSD because it has an OSD built in, meaning it does not use Betaflight's OSD. It uses its own proprietary OSD on the board and you also can find things like what the channel lights are for your uh, LEDs on your board so you can tell what channel you're on when you're in the VTX and you can also find all kinds of other things like what the modes are and etc in Betaflight. So now let's talk about the specs on the Tiny GT8. Now this guy here is using the 804 7500 kV motors, which is a little bit bigger than the 7 was using. It's using the 1935 props, which is also a little bit bigger than the previous model. And it's also using that same OV231 800 TVL with 150 degree field of view camera. It's using that Q25 VTX 25 milliwatt 16 channel with built-in OSD into the board, not in beta flight, same as the 7. It's using the SP Racing flight controller and the 10 amp ESE, also the same as the 7. It also has beta flight preloaded with SP Racing F3 target installed, and I believe that was 3.4, so you're probably going to want to upgrade that. I put 3.6 on mine without any problem. It comes in FR Sky, Fly Sky, and Spectrum, and it weighs 47.6 grams. So not much of a difference from the 7 other than the motors and the props. So let's get into a flight, which is I know what you want to see about this guy and see how it performs versus some of the other competitors out there, like the 75X. So right off the bat, I want you to know I did try to load Butterfly, which you know I always use, and something in the target for the new release of Butterfly for SP Racing just wasn't working out. I was getting prop chatter like nobody's business. So I took it back to Betaflight 3.6, which is release candidate 3 currently, and everything locked right back in without any problems. So as you can see, we can do acro just fine. Um, it flies very, very stable, no PID or rate adjustments. I just loaded it and that was it, and just put it back up in the air and everything was beautiful. Now I'm leaving this crash into the footage uh, for a very specific reason, because as you know, I've been giving you feedback on the turtle modes on all of these little guys, and this one actually can turtle mode. The motors are powerful enough to flip it over 
without any problem and off we go again which is really important to me when we're talking about these because I'm more specifically with the 2s models I'm looking for outside and I think a lot of people are looking for outside and the ability to do a bit more acro with these whoop class quads because you know we want to be able to still fly that fun stuff without having to drive a million miles away because not all of us can you know go to Puerto Rico and things like this to fly some of us are you know stuck at our yard so this is a great candidate if you're looking it is very competitive to the 75x in my opinion you have to get a little bit accustomed to this built-in osd instead of your beta flight osd uh, you can adjust it it does work uh, adjustment wise and it does what we need it to do which is it tells us flight times and most importantly it tells us our battery which is pretty much all i need you know the rest i kind of leave up there for the show so uh, plenty stable as you can see powerful it was blowing pretty good outside um, it has been for several days here so this is in the wind in a strong wind too so I think you're gonna not have very many problems at all flying this little guy outside I found the frame to be very durable and in a second here you're going to see me hit a branch right there pretty hard uh, hard enough to eject the battery but no damage at all to the frame solid no damage to any parts at all so definitely a strong frame they've got going on this as well the only downside in my opinion to it all is the camera angle which you know as i've mentioned before nobody has in my opinion got it completely right yet and you probably will never get one of these completely right for the masses you're gonna have to probably build your own to get it exactly how you want it to be but between that camera angle and it probably could use just a little bit more powerful of motors there's nothing about these motors that are preventing it from doing what i want it to do um but as you saw in some of the flips and stuff it, it you know comes close to the ground and maybe does a little bounce off it but is is not completely underpowered to the point where it just flops and hits the ground like as if it was a brushed quad or anything so it's a really good quad um price is not too bad it's competitive as well so i think we have a contender here in something to think about as well if you're looking and you're not completely sure or like some of the complaints about the beta 75x so as always guys thanks for watching the channel always give me feedback in the comments don't forget to subscribe like the channel tell your friends remember the huge giveaway i got going on not getting a lot of people getting on that not sure why thanks happy flying Hey guys, thanks for stopping by and checking out the quadcopter review. If you want to see more interesting reviews on FPV related stuff, take a look up here in the old right corner right there. You'll find links to all the rest of my reviews. If you want to get in on some of the best giveaways on YouTube, look over here. Don't forget to subscribe right here on my chin. And if you want to check out my flying only videos separated from the review channel, check that out right here. And thanks for coming. Don't forget to subscribe and happy flying.